63% of registered Republican primary voters, which are the most you know, high propensity voters, 63%. This is not the marginalia. This is the most dedicated of the voters believe Joe Biden's illegitimate. Not that there was Jim Jordan. Not there's some issues. They're not issues. There's no issues with the 2020 election. They stole it. Let me repeat that. They stole it. And they hate when we say this. They stole it. And they're on notice. They're not going to be able to steal it again. People are doing a ton of work on this. And that's still not enough. But it's going to get better. The hairy eyeball is going to be on them. The only way they defeat Trump is to steal it. The only way they, they defeat Trump is they steal it. The only way they defeat Trump is they steal it. He is unstoppable. Oh my God, did anybody else notice that Steve Bannon has come up with like a cheat code to stop people from critiquing his BS arguments? Like I know he said a lot of stuff that is untrue and I wanna talk about it. But he dropped a hairy eyeball in there and I feel like I just can't get past that without addressing it. What the hell are you talking about? Steve Bannon, I understand that just based on one look, you are clearly facing some health problems. That is indisputable. Is hairy eyeball one of them? Because like at the very least, shave your eyeballs, man. That can't be good for you. And maybe look into a medicinal solution. I don't know. I see ads from Big Pharma addressing all sorts of things. I haven't seen one for hairy eyeball, but maybe it's available. Before we continue with the story, we depend on members to keep on going. Don't wait, click join now on YouTube. That shell of a man, that wasted sack that is Steve Bannon is reassuring his audience that don't you worry. You have been told that the election was stolen. You were also told that Donald Trump would be returned to the White House before the next election. It didn't happen, it won't happen. Um, you're not wrong though to believe that the election was stolen. Plenty of people do. And so he claimed in there that it's not just randos that believe that, that, that Joe Biden is illegitimate. No, it's some of the most committed people who follow politics. So here's the thing. We have tracked down, based on the numbers he provided, the actual poll that he appears to be referencing. It is exit polling done by CNN, so it's legitimate. It's CNN for Ohio's recent Republican Senate primary. It's voters in a Republican primary that believe that Joe Biden is illegitimate. What the hell is that supposed to demonstrate? I know what he wants you to think it demonstrates. He wants you to think that, or at least he wants his base to think that everybody thinks that the election was stolen or knows the election was stolen. That's not what it demonstrates. What it demonstrates is that four years on from the 2020 election, right wing media has been incredibly successful at bamboozling their audience and instilling in them a perpetual victimhood complex where they believe that their guy, no matter how flawed as a candidate, no matter how despised by the populace, can never legitimately lose an election when he has never actually won the majority of a vote in an election. Donald Trump lost the popular vote in 2016. He lost in 2020. His candidates regularly lose in midterm elections. He has been a terrible steward of the Republican Party. But ignore all of that, please, please ignore all of that. And just pretend that it's always been stolen from him. And so, yes, he's right. 65% of the Republican Ohio Senate primary base still believes that the election was stolen. That is a disgrace to see that a political media apparatus has so thoroughly lied to their viewers. But it's one that he's continuing because he's not just talking about that to remind people. He's not looking four years back to the last election. He's looking ahead to the next one. And he looks at Donald Trump and he sees a guy that isn't more popular than he was. He's not a better candidate. He's not better at avoiding needless controversy or scandals or turning off independent voters that he desperately needs. He's just as flawed as he was. And so what do you know? They're pursuing the same strategy that they did in 2020. And that strategy was start telling people months out from the election that the thing is gonna be stolen. So that when Donald Trump loses, you can immediately transition into, look, I told you. It was gonna be stolen and it was. And now maybe you should grab a gun and you should head to the Capitol grounds. And so I don't know for sure that that's happening coming up soon. Um, but I know that he had no problem with it when it happened last time. And I know that he's not going to be pumping the brakes on people doing it next time. So everyone prepare yourself for what's to come, not only in November, but also in January. 
In any event, in addition to the victimhood complex, he also, you always on the right have to feel like you are the most aggrieved victim minority ever, and also the best, strongest, most moral person ever. So let's turn to the other side of that now with this. You're activated, you're a cadre. This every revolutionary movement has to have this and hey, we've got it and it's you. And that's what they hate, that's why they're trying to put, they hope in putting Trump in jail and stripping Trump of his resources. They destroy Trump and destroy Trump, all of a sudden you have no hero, you have no leader. Let me repeat this, they cannot win unless they cheat. They cannot beat Trump unless they steal it. And people say, you can't say that, you know, there's, there's certain, uh, you know, college graduate suburban women who, who don't like that, you know, or every election is about the future, screw you. Okay, so. If, if I can follow the chain of logic of gin soaked Santa there, uh, these suburban women don't exist. Elections aren't about the future, they're just about relitigating the last time you tried to overturn democracy. But forget about that. The thing that stands out to me there is you're part of a cadre and a revolutionary movement. And my God, do I wish we could return to a time when words had meaning. What he is part of is an incredibly well funded, top down funded, Political movement that's designed to make sure that nothing happens in politics that challenges those who have already won. They've won the economic lottery, they have a stranglehold on our politics and on regulation. They've got the tax cuts that they want, and they are swimming in an ocean of money. To say that you are part of a revolutionary movement when you are trying to get elected a literal billionaire who will get into office to once again shower millionaires and billionaires with massive tax cuts is. I think one of the most intentionally dishonest things that I've ever heard in politics. It is a 100% counter revolutionary establishment political movement that is masquerading cosplaying as a revolution. They want to get into office to stop anything from happening. That is not the thing that revolutions are made of, okay? It does describe a political philosophy. Feel free to study your history and you might be able to figure out which one it is. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.